the next thing which you need to know in r what are the variables in r see like you know a variable can provide us with named storage that your program can manipulate and a variable in r can store an atomic vector it can be a group of atomic vectors or a combination of many many r objects and a valid uh, variable name it consists of letters numbers and the dot or underline characters and a variable name that starts with a letter or the dot not followed by a number so all these are what are variables now for a variable assignment the variables can be assigned values using leftward rightward and equal to operator and uh, the value of the variable can be printed you can print it using the print or the cat function cat cat function and this cat function combines multiple items into a continuous print output what did i mean by this let's say i want to create an assignment using equal operator for which i shall say var dot 1 this is nothing but the combination of let me say four numbers 0 1 2 3 now if i want to print this i just call this var dot 1 and it tells me it is 0 1 2 3 now the second method is assignment using the leftward operator that is what does it mean by using the leftward operator i say let me take i say i take the variable name as var that dot 2 i say i use the leftward operator and i say it is the combination of learn and let me say r now if i want to print this out i say var dot 2 it says learn and r i can also take the assignment as a rightward operator which means i say let me say is a combination of true comma 1 this is the right operator then i say this is nothing but where dot 3 now if i call back this where dot 3 1 comma 1 why because true means 1 number 1 false is 0 that is i can uh, assign uh, the variable using an equal to operator the leftward operator or the rightward operator anything Okay, so I see that the uh, the logical true statement got typecast as an integer or yes, uh, probably yes, numeric, sir. right? That's right. Now, if I replace, say, this true with false, say I replace this true with false, I execute this and I say where dot three. See, false is zero. Like I said, true is one, false is zero. this at least gets me to another wonderful concept i shall request all of you after this course gets over after 5 days please be in touch uh, with me for at least next 2 to 3 months after that and okay now here uh, we will see how do we find variables in r now to know all the variables which are um, currently available in the workspace we use the ls function ls so this ls function can use also use patterns to match the variable names that is if i say print of ls this means i am using the ls function to find the variables available in my workspace it says these are all the variables which are available in my workspace all these are the variables which we have used till now 
and but please remember one thing this ls function can also use patterns to match the variable names that means what i mean i can say print uh, let me say ls of a uh, pattern which i shall say is where so if i use this and there's one more bracket here so this means i am looking for variables which start with the pattern where var these are all the ones which we have used till now here <laughs> we have uh, we don't have the variables which start with dot these variables which start with dot are hidden and they can be listed using this all names as true that is if i say print uh, L ls and then i say all dot name this is true so this will give me all the things which start with dot the variables which start with dot Hey, uh, sir, could you explain to me what you mean uh, the all names that start with dot? Yeah, see, sir, it might so happen that uh, sometime during when we have declared the variable, we might have had some variable which starts with dot, like say dot car or something. This will not be listed in the previous one if I use this. Now, if I want to list even all the variables which start with this dot, like this dot car, so i have to use this all dot name as true i have to set this all dot name as true for me to see that since in our previous example we have, we have not taken anything which starts with dot you can take any variable which starts with dot it will be listed in this it will not be listed in the previous one that is this one the sorry uh, this one in this one it won't be listed all variable which start with dot something like this dot car or something of that kind any variable of that kind oh okay of course that's that's like uh unix file systems okay yes exactly yeah correct correct that's true okay now we would see on how do we delete the variables see the variables can be deleted using the rm function rm r for romeo m for mike and to delete the variable let's say i want to delete the variable this um, var.3 var.3 so what i will do i'll just say rm of var.3 this will remove this variable var.3 once again what you can do you can list it down and see say here i list it down see it does not give me var.3 it is deleted that var.3 what is this colon operator in r see say if you want to make a long vector say if you want to make a vector of length 50 50 how will you do that is you want to list out numbers from 1 to 50 you would just say 1 colon 50 it will give you all numbers from 1 to 50 this uh, colon operator creates a sequence of numbers starting at the number to the left of the colon and increasing by 1 until it reaches the number to the right of the colon or just before if an increment of 1 would move past the last number that is i said this colon operator left of the colon and increasing by 1 until it reaches the number to the right of the colon or just before if an increment of 1 would move past the last number what did i also in fact going with this example continuing with this say i want numbers from minus 1 to plus 1 it will tell me it is minus 1 0 and plus 1 this proves our definition i would uh, suggest to you please don't like this the only thing you should love in rs when you start scrapping data from the web 
then you that delight should come on your face that you pulled out something from the web which is very very useful to you which is one or you can say the richest form of secondary data when you do web and uh, sorry when you do a data analytical project the richest form of secondary data which is by web scraping you can wonderfully scrape the web using r okay i'll take your word okay. for it yep now see here i said it increments the number by 1 what if you want number to be incremented more than 1 then what you do you use the sequence function that is i say seq i want numbers from point 1 to let me say point 9 in increment of point 2 it would give me all the numbers from point 1 to point 9 in increment of point 2 Does the colon operator call the sequence function? Yes. Or is it like an alias of it? It is not. It is on the part of the type of problem you are solving. Maybe certain problems which you will realize later during a session. Maybe on the fourth and fifth day when you solve problems, the mix of all these th thing comes into picture. The currently what we are seeing is just the building blocks, and all this would come into picture when we solve problems. Because I would Could say that we had given everybody a, a long enough pause. Okay, okay. Now, see, because we are practically say always working on vectors, there is one caveat which I want to warn you about. Say, if you want to know the length of a string, you might, I would say, reasonably enough, think you can get it using the length function. You would be wrong that function gives you the length of a vector so if you give it a single string it will always return one that is if i say uh, the length of something like let me say quacks i want to find out the length of quacks it will tell me it is one now on the other hand if i say i want to find the length which is a combination of let me say foo and uh, let me say bar this would tell me it is two because there are two words over here here the c whether you call it as a combination or concatenation whatever it is one and the same i would call it combination there are books and places or there are quite a lot of people in this arena who call it as concatenate i would say it is a combination it is all one and the same whether you call it as concatenate or combine it's all one and the same i you know you when you said combination at the beginning i was that i was starting to get confused between like a statistical combination no no it has got nothing But, to do with statistics no yeah. currently we, the, we have no, not even touched statistics, statistics right yeah no and then i looked it up then i looked it up right it's in in the in the documentation it uses the word combine see there are some people who say combine some people say uh, the concatenation some a lot of terms people use it's all one and the same 
it's all one and the same it depends from person to person but the meaning for all it is the same what is used the world over whether concatenate combine or whatever you call for the c these are generally the two terms which i use um, interchangeably concatenate or combine No, no, I just wanted to like, I think that, you know, you you think about the word combination in the context of the verb combined. That's no, that's how I've been. That's how I've been uh, translating your speech. And, and I'm perfectly fine with you calling it a combination. OK, it has got nothing to do with statistical function combination. Nothing to do with that. OK, can we go ahead? Yes, please. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, now suppose say you want to find out the length of the actual string, like this word quacks, which we used earlier here. This has got three alphabets. How do I find out the length of the actual string? I'll use the function n care, the number of characters I'll say mm -hmm. of this quacks. It will tell me it is three. N uh, sorry, n care of this is three because the number of characters is three. On the other hand, if I say I want to find out the number of characters of this combination of foo and let me say bar, it will tell me it is three, three, means three, four, foo and three, four, bar. Purposely, I want to handle the statistics uh, using R separately, which is the bread and butter of R language. We will handle it separately on one of these days. Then you would realize that you need to know all the statistical concepts to work with these uh, with R to extract the complete power of R. I think we're good. Are we good? OK, yeah, there would yeah. be many a cases where you would be required to concatenate the strings. Now, suppose we have like here, we have used the two uh, strings foo and bar. Now, suppose say I want to combine these two th strings. That is, I want the output as foo bar without any space in between foo and bar. What I shall do. I shall use the I shall use the function paste. I shall say paste. I want to paste this foo and I want to paste bar. But this time the separator that I use is nothing. Absolutely no separator. So this tells me it is foo bar. Separator, I don't give it a space in between. So that's why it gives me foo bar. You can also see the other way. Like if I don't mention the separator, what happens here? This tells me it is foo and a space in between because both are separate words. I've used R on and off, but I haven't been taught these functions. Thank you very much for showing them to me. My pleasure. Well, I think you'll be happy to know that uh, you can also use the Unix command cat for this. <laughs> yes. That's like I said in between, right, madam? You said the right thing. Like I said in between, we are taking baby steps. We would cover everything in R. Everything, everything. In this five days, we will uh, push ourselves towards the wall and learn everything so that at the end of the fifth day, you're ready to solve problems, practical problems, which has to be your takeaway from this course. Marco, did you say cat or cat? 
Pat, C-A-T. Same thing yeah. you'd use in a Unix box. It seems to follow. Um, <clears throat> um, Dr. Suresh, it, is there a particular reason that R follows a lot of the similar similar Unix style aliases like, you know, cat for concatenate, ls for list? There is um, one reason why R follows that. I've got your question, madam. So uh, the whole of the ecosystem says there are three languages which follow simple spoken English, which are R, Python, and Julia. That is why even to this day, uh, big organizations such as Microsoft, the, the, the modules which they are writing off late, all have been written using Python. And they follow Python because it is very, very user friendly and it is a high level language similar to R. It's a high level language and it's a simple spoken English. That's what the whole of the ecosystem says. That's why we use all commonly used words. Gotcha. Great. Okay, let's take a step ahead. Now, suppose if you have a vector and you want to find the ith element of the vector, what you can do, you can index the vector to get it. What that is, what do I mean? Say I take a variable v. I want numbers from 1 to 5. I shall say 1 colon 5 and call the variable v. It will give me numbers from 1 to 5. In this, the number 1 has got index value 1. Number 2, index value 2, all the way to number 5, which is index value 5. Say I have got a huge, huge collection of numbers. Something like, let's say you're working in a machine shop at an industrial setup which is picking up the values or let's say the readings from the machine, which is grinding something, which would be on a second by second basis. And you want to find out which, what is the value or which is the vector at index value one. So I would say it is V within square braces one. It would tell me it is number one. Similar way, say I want to find out the third element. It is number three. But please remember, you have to use a square braces. You have to use a square braces to access uh, in, uh, indexes. Yes, sir. Now, see, similar to this, you can say if you want to extract a sub vector, what you can do, you can also do this with indexing. And you just use a vector of indices that you want inside the square bracket. For this, you use the colon operator or the concatenate function. An example, say I say I want a vector of numbers from one to three. It will give me all the numbers from one to three. Or I say I want a combination of three numbers for which I shall say I have a combination. I want a combination of one, three and five, which gives me this. Similar to this, you can also use a vector of Boolean values to pick out, say, those values that are true. Let's say I have got a vector. I've got a vector of five Boolean values, which I would say is V, the combination of, uh, let me say, true, uh, false, uh, true, false, and true. So this close regular braces and the square braces. This tells me it is one, three, and five. Why one, three, and five? It picks up the values which are true. True is at index value one, index value three, and index value five. That's why it gives you one, three, and five. See here we are seeing indexing. When is that this indexing is very useful? Under what conditions would you say that this indexing is very, very useful? Could anybody help me, please? <laughs> okay, no problem. I See, mean, I mean, I was going to say subsetting. No, uh, that's no, probably an no. obvious answer. No, it is you're you're correct to some extent, but that answer of yours needs to be stretched. That is, this indexing is very useful when you combine it with expressions. When you combine these indexing with expressions, it is very, very useful. 
what you can do you can say for example get a vector of boolean values telling you which value of a vector are even number and then use that vector to pick them out what do i mean let me say this variable which we have used is v i say v percentage percentage 2 this assign it a value 0 see what you get now if i want to say just pick up the values which are true what will i do i'll say v of v percentage percentage 2 equal to 0 this would tell me it is the second and the fourth element which is true once again see this indexing is really useful when you combine it with expressions and please bear with me all this we will be using when we solve problems I, I I want to give other people time with this one because it is an important concept. But I see two hands. I I think we could go on. OK, no problem. Great. See what you can do. You can also get the complement of a vector of indices. If you change the sign of them, I said you can get the complement of a vector of indices. If you change the sign of them, that means if I say V of negation of numbers from one to three can you tell me without executing what will be the output it will be four and five you can get the complement of a vector of indices if you change the sign of them uh, it is also possible to give vector indices names and if you do that you can use those to index into the vector. What you can do, you can uh, set the name of a vector when constructing it or use the names function. We shall put it into action and see. The first one that is, uh, it, I said it is also possible to give vector indices names. And if you do that, variable V. This is a, con a combination of, let me say, A, which is 1, let me say, B, which is, let me say, 2, uh, and C, which is 3. Now, if I call back this variable V, as you have said, it will be 1, 2, 3. Now, I can access the individual elements too. That is, if I say the this variable V, I want to know what is for this value A it will tell me it is one on the other hand i even said you can set the names of a vector when you construct it or use the names function that means i can say names of this v which i take as the variable which is the combination of let me say x uh, y and z now if i say just call back this variable v see what I get exactly the same output in the similar way I can also say V of what is this X it will tell me it is one but please remember these names can be very handy for making tables uh, you can look up a value by a key see the uh, we said that these names can be handy for making tables where you can look up a value by a key. Uh, now, the reason that the expressions which we have seen work with the vector values instead of single values is that in R, arithmetic expressions all work component wise on vectors. Now, suppose, say you write an expression such as this one. I say X, which is numbers from one to three, and I also say Y which is basically numbers I wanted from four to six. 
now if i uh, I, i write a small mathematical equation to take both these variables x and y into consideration i say x raised to the power 2 or x square minus y this will give me values minus 3 1 and plus 3 basically what i am doing i uh, i am telling r to take each element in the vector x square it and subtract element wise by y that is what r does for me over here and in between i have used a semicolon Okay. Uh, let us know when you you need more time, but I'm I'm going to go ahead and call it again. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Let's go ahead. Okay. Now, see, this kind of an operation works even well when you got uh, the two vectors of different length. Say, I say I have got a vector x, which is numbers from one to four, and I have got a vector, let's say y. which is basically numbers from 1 to 2 now if i say uh, x minus y see this i get this that is even if you have vectors of different length also it will work yeah no and I, i just took a little bit of time myself to see how uh y gets looped over twice in that basically it's subtracted okay. it's matching x the first two and then and the two doesn't take the, anything yeah yeah then well no no it does actually it does then it, uh at, at i at index 3 then we start over at index 1 of y yes it again starts with kind of it loops around so yeah it loops around the y that. loops around oh. didn't expect that Okay, so the only person can you tell me one thing? Who can help you with all this uh, syntax? It is only your pocket reference handbook or the quick syntax handbook. And like I said, there are two ways of getting it. One, you can uh, shed out some money and buy it, or otherwise, I can give you the licensed copy. I just need to raise a request. and i get the license copy i mail it to you yeah thanks okay we i uh, did we had we did get three hand raises on that one so okay let's go ahead considering that you want to go ahead okay now see uh, if there's we stop me <laughs> oh <laughs> there is a small condition to what we have done now if the length of the longer vector is not a multiple of the length of the shorter vector you get a warning and the expression still repeats the shorter vector a number of times just not an integer number of times very important very very important once again i shall repeat it in more or less the same words uh if the length of the longer vector is not a multiple of the length of the shorter vector you get a warning and the expression still repeats the shorter vector a number of times just not an integer number of times that is if i say x 
is basically my vector from one to four. And I say my y is basically from one to three. Now, if I want to find out, let's say x minus y, see what I get. I get a warning message that longer object length is not a multiple of shorter object length. But still it computes, it tells 0, 0, 0, 3. Here this y is used once against the 1 to 3 part of x. And the first element of y is then used for the 4, number 4 in x. Say something like quacks. This tells me it is 1. See, in R, you can also use the names of the parameters when calling a function in addition to the positions. Now, that is, we are, if you remember, we had seen an example with the sep, separator when we, uh, when we used paste to concatenate two strings. Now, if you have a function, let me say it's something like function of x, com, x comma y of two parameters, x and y. This is more or less the same as calling function of phi comma 10, which means calling this f with parameters x set to 5 and parameter y set to 10. So in R, what do you do? You will say f of either I say phi comma 10. Here, what does this phi comma 10 mean? This is function of uh, x equal to phi and y equal to 10. This is f is 5 and 10. Don't run this because it will not understand what is this f. I wrote this just for the purpose of showing it to you. Just for the purpose of showing it to you. Now, you can combine uh, the two ways of passing parameters to functions as long as you put all the positional arguments or the positional parameters before the named ones means I have to say f of phi. I can also say y equal to 10. It will give me output. But once again, please don't run this because it will not understand what is this f. I wrote this for the purpose of showing it to you and making you understand what these things are. So once you're clear with this, we get into business of writing our own functions. Because as you know, in any programming language, there are two types of functions. You've got an inbuilt function and a user-defined function. We will create quite a few UDF, user-defined functions, once you're through with this. I think we're good to move on. Okay, so first function, let's write, uh, say, to find the square of a number. To find the square of a number, we are very comfortable. It has to be that variable raised to the power two. So I take the variable as square. I want to, I create a function of this, of a variable x, where, uh, sorry, of this variable x where this x is x raised to the power 2. Now, if I say I want to find out the square of 2, it will tell me it is 4. Or if I even say I want to find the square of numbers from 1 to 4, it will give me the output. Now, I'll request you kindly create a function. Let's say from num for numbers from 1 to 5, where I want you to square the numbers and subtract. So create a function square and subtract of numbers from one to five. The question is crisp. Please do it yourself. And as I had told you earlier, I shall also do it, but try not looking at my solution, please.
uh, uh, making a function with one variable input? Yes. You okay. very. I expected some other thing for uh, for you to tell me, sir. I wanted you to ask me why do you need so many statements? Why are you confusing us? In fact, this whole of this thing, I could have done it in a very simple way. I could have told uh, square and subtract. This is nothing but the function of x comma y, and here this x is x square minus y. That's and once I call back the square and subtract the function of this and this. Now, as long as there's a single function and you don't need any curly braces. So here, if I here I've just told it is x and y, and what I need. I need x square minus y. So the only change what I will do over here, I call back this function and here I shall insert one small thing. I shall say return. I want it to return x square minus y. That's all. And then I call back this square and subtract. It tells this is a function. Now here, such if I write such an expression, it will not work in R. So you have to write this kind of an expression what we have written for you to get the value. You might think you can return it in one single line, but it will not give you any useful result in R. You have to write this bigger part of the story. What is the significance of the function return or the, the syntax return? Yeah, return is if you if you are comfortable programming in C, C++, when you say return, it basically you are asking it to give you an output. You are asking this function what you have created to return an output, this function. You want this function to return an output and you are telling return x square minus y, but still it does not give you anything. R will understand only uh, uh, if you write it in this way, this whole block. What do you want to do? Or see, there is another one more thing. If I say uh, what I shall do in the end, I shall say run the same thing. See this, the same thing after where we write all these steps. See, it gives you the same thing. What we have done, I have told the square and subtract is nothing but a function of x comma y. I want it to return x square minus y. And what is that I want to do? I want the square and subtract for numbers from one to five, reverse the order. I use this REV. So that's why it gives me the same thing. Well, yeah, no, because I, I tried both of your functions, the one with the return, one without, and the one yes. without the return works yes, just as works. well. Yes, see, see, sir, R understands either this. Now, I was just about to say this. Once again, I'll run it without return here. I copy this, paste it here, and then I shall say I want this this thing. This, uh, I call this function sum and subtract, square and subtract. It will give me the same thing. Spoken English. No complications in R. This return I use because for those of you who are comfortable programming in C, C++, you yeah. continuously use this function return. So if that is in your mind, fine, you can use return. It will give you the same output. Oh, no, thank you for uh, having time with me here. I, I think that I remember, I'm, I'm trying to remember from years ago when I when I first learned R, and I think I understand the the point here. So yes. I'm I'm ready to continue if everybody else is. Great. So, I'm good. Sir, yeah. Now suppose, see, say there would be many a cases where we would be required to find the summation of a number, which in R is called as summarizing. Now suppose I want to find out, say, the sum of first four numbers. In R, it's very simple. I just say sum of numbers from one to four. It will tell me it is ten. Just using the sum function, which is the summarize function.
this actually reminds me of a wonderful thing which i shall request all of you to do it after you do this summation or the summarizing please find the average of numbers from 1 to 5 once again the function average will not work you have to create a function average please create a function average find out the average of numbers from 1 to 5 i shall also do it but kindly do not look at what i am doing request you to find the mean and standard deviation of all numbers from 1 to 10 mean and standard deviation of numbers from 1 to 10 can you please find it out excuse me tell me one thing what we have done here finding this mean and standard deviation is this a vectorized function do you feel it is is, uh, is this a vectorized function or not what do you mean by vectorized function do you mean that it accepts a vector or no 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 here you might feel that here i have taken numbers from 1 to 10 does this indicate that this is a vectorized function i am taking vector which is a number from 1 to 10 looking at this do you feel it is a vectorized function or not but you will have to even give me justification with that why do you feel or why is that you don't feel anybody please this is not a vectorized function why because we do not process the values in the input element wise and it doesn't compute a single summary but it returns something which is more complex please remember complicated functions often return data more complex than vectors or single values so keeping wonderful people i want to do more more and more say i want to normalize the data by subtracting the mean from each element and then dividing by the standard deviation for numbers from 1 to 10 can you help me do it the question is i desire to normalize the data by subtracting the mean from each element and then dividing it by the standard deviation can you for numbers from 1 to 10 can you help me solve it I hope all of us are going together. Has anybody got left behind? Because finally, we have all met at this 
wonderful juncture just so that we all of us understand what we are doing. The question is, I wish to normalize data by subtracting the mean from each element and then dividing by the standard deviation for numbers from 1 to 10. How will I do it or how will I implement this? Yeah, no, I'll just because I'm I'm always speeding everybody up. I'm actually uh, struggling with this a little bit, uh, so bear with me. Yeah, no problem, no problem, absolutely no. I am with you. Here, what we have done, we have normalized the data by subtracting the mean from each element and then divide, uh, divided it by, with the standard deviation for numbers from 1 to 10. There is one uh, wonderful trick to understand R very, very well, because I have been running after R for more than two decades. But the only trick is uh, maybe in another about an hour, we would be breaking off for uh, dinner, sorry, lunch for you and dinner for me. At that time, I would request you, please don't uh, have anything for your lunch. Eat R. You will understand R very, very well. That is what I do. Morning I drink instead of a cup of tea, I drink Python. Lunch I eat R and dinner once again Python and R. I am laughing at you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> And with each problem that we are doing, we are going one step higher, higher and higher. Because I feel that is the only way how we can learn more things. And I shall try repeating the question in the same words. I said I wanted to normalize data. The data is from numbers from 1 to 10 by subtracting the mean from each element and then dividing by the standard deviation. Okay. And we're creating a function to do this? You have to create a function to do this. Otherwise, it won't work. Because we have specified a condition. It has to be a UDF, user defined function. Yeah, yeah. I see that. OK, no, I guess what I'm, I'm still caught on the standard deviation function. But uh, I wasn't using, I was trying to recreate the function SD. And No, th there's an inbuilt function SD. Yeah, yeah, OK. Still, I, I, th I thought I would have got. Uh, okay, I, I apologize. Then I, I understand. I, I'll, I'll ask to continue if, if everybody else is okay. ready. Can we go ahead, others? If all of uh, all of you have done this and understood this. Yep, I'm good. Okay, thank you. So we take one step ahead of this, but once again, please remember if you would have seen right from the time when we started off this, we are just taking one or at the max two examples of each type because we don't have the liberty of taking more examples. The only place where we will take more examples are when down the line, maybe after a day or two, when we do uh, plotting using R as well as definitely when we solve problems. That is the time when we will take more uh, examples and solve because that requires more amount of intervention by us. <laughs> 